I had two near-death experiences, the first time at the age of six. At that time I was beaten by five other older boys. This experience was very impressive. And the second time it happened at whitewater rafting in a race. I capsized and experienced the afterlife again. It was so amazing that today I am very grateful that I was able to experience it. I was coming home from a movie that I wasn't supposed to watch. It was early evening and already dark. Then I met these five guys who were physically superior to me. Then the first one bumped into me and then all five of them attacked me. Finally I felt a strong punch in the stomach and I thought, oh God, then I was already outside my body. I was floating about 10 to 12 feet above my body and I saw that these guys were very scared and that they ran away. I myself was scared for a short moment, but then I immediately felt very positive. I was aware that this was an extraordinary situation, but also when I saw my body lying down there, I felt like it was completely normal. There was a feeling like, I already know that, this is a very old thing. So I wasn't afraid at all. I was happy because it felt like I was back home. I then briefly had a remote vision where I saw my birth mother, my father and then also my foster mother, but no specific situations. It was only a quick glance at these people and then suddenly I was in the afterlife. There was no tunnel and I don't know where other people's tunnels come from. Maybe it was because I was still a child. Everything happened very quickly and I didn't experience any tunnel at all. For me it was like a beautiful energy. There wasn't just light, it wasn't just bright. There was suddenly a feeling of security, hence this feeling of home. I'm home again. It was some kind of light. I didn't hear any music, but it was still, as they say, the heaven is full of violins. It was an incredibly beautiful, energetic state in which I felt totally protected. Everything around me was a sea of energy. It was like a welcome. I had never experienced anything so beautiful here in this earthly life. And there was always this feeling, I am back home, I belong. And all of these figures that were there were familiar to me. They were like brothers. They spoke to me like a father, like an old, kind, wise man. But there were also young voices, not just old ones. Some of them like angels. Everything was very beautiful, bright and happy. Then there was this feeling that on the one hand I had to go back, but on the other hand there was curiosity and the thought that I wanted to go back. I want to see what happens on earth. I was almost a bit bored and felt like I wanted to experience something more on earth. So on the one hand I wanted to go back, so it wasn't that difficult for me that I had to go back. But on the other hand it was like I had to go back into a cage. That was the case with both of my near-death experiences. Experiences. That's why I felt confined when I returned. The certainty that this was completely real is stronger than if I eat an apple. When I take a bite of an apple, I just know I tasted it, I feel it, I sense it. And this out-of-body experience was more real than this here like me touching a piece of wood here. This is simply absolute certainty. This certainty has become even stronger over the last 20 years. The whole world, all psychiatrists together, could say something different. Then I would just say, it's okay, that's your opinion, but I experienced it. Why should we argue? The next day I briefly told my father that I had experienced this and that I had seen and heard 
otherworldly beings. Then he just said, for God's sake, silence, and never say anything again. Others also basically told me that it would be better to keep quiet about it. But anyone who has ever experienced something like this cannot forget it. It changes lives fundamentally. Since then I have understood religion completely differently. For me it is the reconnection between people and their source. Where do I come from, what is the meaning of life and where am I ultimately going? And once you have experienced something like that, you keep asking questions in this direction. And for me, this is not at all dependent on a conventional denomination. For me, the afterlife is absolute certainty, at least as much as this earthly world. These are completely natural processes, such as day and night, being awake and sleeping. It's constant repetition that we seem to need until we are awake enough, until we are aware enough and have learned enough from it. I have achieved a certain ability to be able to see things, especially with patients and clients in consultation, to recognize in which direction their lives are going, what they should learn and where I can help, what I can tell them. Sometimes I also foresee people's deaths, but I keep that to myself. I don't tell them anything about it. After these experiences, life in all its small details became important to me. I am far from perfect, but I try to understand the meaning behind things. For example, making myself aware of why this or that happens to me. What should I learn from this? What may I learn from this? This made me a completely different person. In any case, these experiences changed my life and I realized that I have to use this to help other people because most people don't think about it enough and are afraid of it. Since then, I think that we as humans should primarily strive to use our abilities to help each other. During my medical studies, I was often surprised that people hardly thought about the possibility that there is more than the material world. Perhaps most people need to experience this world beyond first for themselves, so that they can understand it and lose their fear of it. During our medical trainings, I always missed the mental aspect of mankind. For example, I think it makes sense for young doctors to also learn to meditate. Later, I taught medicine at the University of Frankfurt for 10 years and tried to make it clear to the young students that there is more than only material things and that it is important to work on your own personality and not just learn things by heart. I would probably be afraid at the moment of death because this fear is simply built into our body. As long as we have a body, we have an animal inside us, an unconscious part, so to speak, that definitely doesn't want to die. I believe it is important for humanity to realize that there is much more beyond what we can touch, that there is more than science and the churches and the philosophers tell us nowadays. Since these experiences, just memorizing something is no longer knowledge for me. For me, the only real knowledge is what I experience myself. And since then, I have asked and searched and prayed a lot for more knowledge and even more experience.